Now it's Green Friday. <laughs> Today, we Did you watch Julia Child? I was aware of the Julia Child. Wow. Yeah. No, on Rare Whiskey Fridays, these are whiskeys that uh, aren't necessarily big brands. Sometimes they are. More often than not, they're going to be smaller craft distilleries without a tremendous amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get these whiskeys, you're welcome for the review! Uh, someone did ask. Thank you, y'all. <laughs> the MBs that sent the whiskey. Someone did ask, how long do we have to hear the explanation for Rare Whiskey Fridays before we can stop having an explanation for Rare Whiskey Fridays? The dude, answer is ne dude, never. The <laughs> moment we don't do that. These are rare whiskeys. I've never heard of these. <laughs> oh my god. This is Bear Wallow yeah. Collection. All of these are from Bear Wallow Distillery in Nashville, Indiana. A gift from Carmen Keller. Carmen Keller, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna start with just the straight rye whiskey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Going for the wax seal. So this is called Liar's Bench. Okay. Now I'm, I'm gonna read you a little story. Yeah. You ready? No, oh, I'm ready. This is a note I'm, from. I'm super ready. Now this is actually a note not from Carmen. This is from John Rosebach. Right. Who gave us a couple other bottles. Yeah. And he sent them along with his friend. Yeah. Carmen Keller. Okay. And he said, "Here's some whiskey from the distillery. You originally reviewed Liar's Bench, what we're drinking right now." Okay. In 2018, August 3rd. So we've done that. What I'm interested in seeing is, did it change okay. from those? Dude, that would be amazing if we could compare a bottle that we did back in the day compared to this one to see. I found it, Rex! Hey! Everything's gonna be okay. Okay, so yes, I have it. And then he says, also the single barrel selections. He was a part of helping select some of these whiskeys when they were choosing the next barrel to release. Uh, like he just showed up and was it? And then they had, and he also gives one that's finished in maple syrup barrels. They do with a local farm. And then he said they use a thousand gallon Vendome pot still. All of this is pot stilled whiskey. I believe Instead it. Instead of column still. Well, I believe it. There's a richness to these flavors that we'll eventually get to. And their barrel houses are 40 foot containers, shipping containers. Oh yeah. Just like uh, Andalusia. Cost effective. Yep. And he said, look, these are all from Carmen Keller, not from me. I sent you Three Rivers, which we'll review at oh, another time. Right, right, right. John, I'm not going to read this note again when we do Three Rivers, but just know. Bing. Ooh. I, I, know. I know. I like the I've nose. I've been living in the nose for the last five minutes. It's a beautiful nose. It's, it is rich, right? The fact it's that you said pot still did not surprise me in the candy, slightest. Candy? Yeah. But it's not, there's none of that weird green off weird funk notes. There's not. It's sweet candy and herbal grass. And then there's uh, there's some type Cloves. of- Cloves? Yeah, I was looking like a, like a floral- Yeah, it's very much floral. Flo like flowers rubbed up against a barn door. Oh, I love the nose. Oh, that's nice. Okay, now I really need to see what the original tasted like. That is really nicely matured oak quality that doesn't ever go too far down the bitter path. You just get the character of like a like a smoky wood oak oh, along yeah. with all of, all of the other things we're getting in the nose. Dude, I gotta tell you, whoever is doing barrel selections has an extremely specific nose and palate. These are, they are within 10% of being identical in the nose. That's amazing. Yeah, very close. A year apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm, it's a little more peppery on the palate, and the new one's a little more honey. Yeah, peppery, and I say there's a little bit more of that charred oak. Yeah, there's in, a little more barrel, a little more in pepper. In the one that we did back in the day. In last year's, but the nose is almost identical. This but one, dude, and we're talking about a variance of 15%. Right. This is the most amazingly consistent batch to batch I may have ever seen in a craft I distillery. I think there are some additional, like, uh, there's just a little bit more of a developed, matured yeah. sweetness. There's a better mid palate. In the in the one we pulled out today. Wow, this is still it's great. Beautiful. Indiana, who knew? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh wait, are they Indiana? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah, because if it says distilled in Indiana, Everybody. on the bottle, everyone's like, oh, so you're sourcing from MGP. Everybody will think it's Indiana. And they're like, no, we're actually, here's the coolest thing. This and is I'm, not MGP at all. I'm only gonna say this one time, and then we're gonna go on to the other whiskeys. We gotta give these guys some Pretty awesome credit, especially because we know what they're dealing with yeah. now that we're in the Texas Whiskey Association helping build shit. When Susan Spagnuolo started this distillery, she's the owner, yeah. her family runs it. They were a part of the group that worked for a year and a half to get the laws changed in Indiana to allow craft distilling. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So they have a direct hand in creating the craft movement in sure. Indiana. Right on. Right? They're now five years old. Yeah. And they're making. This is really good rye whiskey. A beautiful example of craft whiskey in the U.S. Okay, so this is the same rye, but one barrel. 
Okay. And released at 60%, is... 120 proof. Goodness. So it still smells mild and pretty. What well, mild and mild and pretty? Was the first one mild and pretty to you? Yeah, it was rich, but it was pretty. It didn't fight with me. The right. spice wasn't oh. overwhelming. Okay, okay. So it's not aggressive. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, it's, it's not, not aggressive. aggressive. It's rich and developed, but not aggressive. No, I'd say this is less developed. Yeah, you know, there's there's enough going on to be interesting, but I think it's less developed than what we just poured. This is barrel 181, bottle 51. There's like a yard aged oak, right? The kind. Yeah, of... the oak is a little more dominant in this one. Yeah, yeah. It takes the place of some of those sweeter elements. Oh yeah. Woo! Ooh, there it is. Mm -hmm. That's tannin heavy right there. Bah. Bam! It's, man, it's, if you want the wood notes turned up by 40%. You know what this is? Yeah. This is a wood pile that's been drying in a field or yeah. in your backyard for years. And then it rains real heavy after the rain. You're walking by that wood pile and saw that old, uh, really dried out wood, but it has some some uh, some moisture in there and some it's the smell of, yeah. And then you add to it mint and cloves. You see what I mean? I like it, but it's no, way more dramatic I'm in the single I'm missing the mint in the cloves. I can get a little bit of a... Mm. No, but it's a it's an herbal mint tea. So far it was a straight rye whiskey that I really liked. And right, now we're gonna go to a single barrel bourbon. I'm kind of excited because we haven't tried their bourbon yet. We've only ever had their rye. Yeah. I'm interested to see what happens. Okay, so this is bat barrel 221, uh, Bottle five. This is just a single barrel straight bourbon. Ooh. Uh, sixty-five percent corn. This is a weeded bourbon. Twenty-five percent wheat and ten percent malted barley. Okay. Uh, and the nose. I'm not finding the it's, classic it's bourbon little, notes. It's a little bit more of a simple sweetness for me. There's very cherry. This might be one of the more cherry nose bourbons I've ever picked up. Yeah, I'm getting. This is like Loudon's I'm cherry. Not, I'm not. We're diverging more and more because I'm not getting as much of a cherry as much as I am like a sweet hay. Look for cherry hard candy. Oh, that's pretty. Wow, that's mild. It's 58% alcohol. 58%, I would never in a million years. No, not at all. Never guess. I would say like high 40s. Yeah, that uh, is. This is a much more cohesive, melded together flavor. For one barrel. There's not, yeah, there's not layers of individual notes that are popping out in a mm -hmm. bunch of different directions. This is just a really nice for me on the taste. I'm getting, getting some molasses now. Man, I could drink at this distillery all day long. Oh, I'd... they're doing some amazing work there. Yeah. That would be my go-to local if I lived in Nashville, Indiana, which is about an hour south of Indianapolis. Hold on, hold on. We've in been, the middle of the heartland. We've been giving him so much love. Let me, let me bust the yeah, rules a little bit. Yeah, freaking Indiana. Say, hey, kids, you want to go to Nashville? Yay! Indiana? Indiana? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when I told somebody I was driving to Paris, and they're like, where? Texas, Paris, Texas, <laughs> like population like five people Son of a bitch. in the middle of the piney woods. Oh, with There's water added, it just gets more simple. Don't add water, that single barrel is best at Yeah, I'm, I'm getting some dark honey and molasses and then there's a little bit of that hay still shows up there and there's some sweet tea elements. Okay, just in order for safety purposes, I'm gonna dump and rinse because I wanna move on to the last one. I'm nervous about this one. Uh, so I, I gotta get into the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. This is a bourbon finished in maple syrup barrels. So they make the whiskey, they age it, then they give the barrels to a local farm that puts maple syrup in it. Then when they're emptied, they get it back and they put whiskey back into it. You like maple syrup? I love maple syrup. You're gonna like the whiskey. Oh my God, that's just maple syrup. Yeah, okay. that's not, like they didn't- That's really watery there was, maple syrup. Let's just say there's a lot of maple syrup left in that barrel when they put whiskey <laughs> in it. Yeah. They didn't hose that out. We need to have a pancake episode. We, Nika malt, yes. w which we said ages ago would be good on pancakes. Right, we should do that. Bear wallow. No, whiskey breakfast. Whiskey breakfast. There's an the whiskeys called. you put on breakfast food. Yes, the whiskey breakfast. Done. That's a, this is going on it. And okay, in the comments. What is your recommended whiskey breakfast, both in whiskeys, but what the whiskey should be paired with? Yeah. You got the waffles, you got the bacons, you got the yeah. orange juice, right? A whiskey mimosa? What are you oh, putting in there? Weird, that'd be weird. Orange juice and whiskey? Oh. I don't know, there's probably something out there that could not make you gag, which is the goal. You know, this is not as maple syrupy. Oh, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. The nose is a bomb of maple syrup. Yeah, but the taste, take, take a sip. It's, you know, before Oh, I, the aftertaste. Before I get into the taste. Is the pure maple syrup aftertaste. Wrapping up the nose. The nose is like this, a little bit of a charred, caramelized maple syrup. Yes. It's some, a little bit of oak in there. Be, yeah, slightly oaky maple yeah. syrup, but it is 90% maple syrup nose. Oh, I get the maple syrup right out of the beginning, man. Yeah, no, I know, but it's less than I thought it would be from the nose. Yeah. But it's still, the aftertaste 
is like you just got a spoonful oh, there of is. maple. There and it is. And it ramps right up. Aftertaste is pure maple syrup. And it keeps going. Here's maple syrup lovers of the world. Yeah. We have found you always. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> and I think that does us. It's Black Friday. No. Someone somewhere is watching us in the car while their spouse is getting uh, mobbed to death in a Walmart. Right. Or something. <laughs> Hopefully they have good life insurance. Yeah, and cleats. <laughs> Here's always the fighting, cleats. stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal me, you steal lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. See, cleats aren't good in the store because they skid. Oh, they slip. That's yeah. true. Yeah, it's a rookie. But never... once you're down, yes. then you can be yeah. kicking. 